uh, fragmentary mm -hmm. localism where you have one level of loyalty to your local community and the next level up is the whole planet and right. there's nothing in between no state no nation you know just a planetary consciousness and a uh, and a community consciousness Well, Victor, tell me, what's the most interesting idea that you've encountered here in Prague? Has there been anything stunning? Yeah, probably yes. Uh, I want to establish a new organization in Russia uh -huh. when I'm just coming uh, to Russia. And I want to do a new organization in Russia. It's a Russian Transpersonal Center. And the most interesting idea which came uh, to me here was it's just uh, a special way how uh, that these organizations must, must do, must uh, function. function, right. And uh, I cannot just formulate, I cannot define this idea directly, but it definitely will be a new uh, ways to connect, uh, new ways to uh, concern goals of these organizations. Uh, uh, there is no boundaries, real boundaries between us. It's like axiom. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is probably the basis of, uh, on which we can establish, we can grow up. Uh, the way of functioning these kind of organizations. Sure, yes, yeah, right. I'm sure you understand. No, no, understand. Way. no way. Well, so you feel that these transpersonal ideas could have an impact in Russia as it undergoes whatever social evolution it's going to undergo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, also it doesn't matter, uh, will uh, everybody can accept this kind of functioning, this kind of ideas, no matter, accept or not, but uh, anyway, this uh, idea will be, and it will be real, uh, because it's like general, it's more close to general way of all nature, so I think so, I hope. So you mean it's almost explicit in the yeah. order of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So some kind of ever-present organic order is emerging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was why I thought it was interesting that Denmark voted against the EC, because I think European federalism is the old style of government and that uh, fragmentary mm -hmm. localism where you have one level of loyalty to your local community and the next level up is the whole planet and right. there's nothing in between no state no nation you know just a planetary consciousness and a uh, and a community consciousness mm -hmm. Yeah, because on our biological level, we have to uh, solve our problems, uh, which uh, grows up from our ego, and uh, this is the main uh, point of our difficulties. The ego. But, yeah, yeah. But also on social level, there is probably the most problem is egos of uh, organizations, egos of countries, of states, and probably if we solve this kind of connections so do, in, in institutional new, in ways, right uh -huh. it will be more more appropriate uh -huh. for our life right like uh, as social objects yeah, absolutely do you know franco delia 
No, just this, this is time Victor Rupo. Nice to meet you. Franco did a lot of, uh, in fact, the only research allowed on LSD in the United States in, what, in the late 70s, early 80s? Early 80s. And, and was that at NIMH? Or? Well, NIMH never gave the funding, but it was an FDA approved study, and it was approved also by the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was a um, protocol that took several years to develop to get approved by the FDA. Mm -hmm. It involved up to 10 sessions of LSD. And the standard dose of 400 micrograms in one group and 25 in their control group. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the other study was more open ended with cancer patients where we were trying to change the research to uh, variate for the experience rather than the drug. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had data that showed that people that had a certain type of experience would do better with anxiety and depression and pain. So we wanted to use patients as their own controls mm -hmm. and control for the experience. When the experience happened, and we had an instrument that we developed to try to measure mm -hmm. when the experience took place, then we would measure this, uh, psychometrically what the effects were. And it was a, there was a, a better, more open-ended mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. I always felt that we shouldn't be controlling uh, for the dosage, mm -hmm. this is not a drug reaction. It's not nice a matter of I know. just giving the drug. It's what a behavioral we claim is that certain experience that resulted from the administration of the drug correlated with positive results. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, if somebody were to activate some childhood trauma, mm -hmm. didn't quite complete it, you might expect mm -hmm. them to be depressed for a couple of weeks afterwards until they could get back in and complete it. So it would be a mistake to say, let's just give this dosage and then measure the effect, because it wasn't a question of dosage, it was a question of the nature of the experience that was activated now and how that affected a personality. So the, we, can, we were able to do that with the cancer patients to have um, to use the, the patients at their own controls and then uh, measure the what we call the peak experience. And Walter Pankey, <coughs> it was uh, a theologian and a physician and psychiatrist that started this uh, research at the American Psychiatric Research Center, and he had developed a scale based on the literature and mysticism. And, uh, uh, various people, and they found that uh, if, if on this scale people had at least 60 percent, you could conclude that they had a, a peak experience. Mm -hmm. So there was a way then to say, okay, if you were above 60 percent, were you different in terms of what you showed on the MMPI scale of anxiety and depression before and after. And in fact, it, 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 it was measurable. The people that had a peak experience, their psych psychometric testing was uh, much improved compared to the ones that didn't. And the next phase then was, to me, was, okay, if you don't get a peak experience, then can you get one if you continue treatment? Because there is a whole process here. It's not, you're not just dealing with, you know, the drug is just the key that is opening the door to some inner process that could unfold with time. And it's conceivable very well that if people were not pickers to begin with, may convert to be pickers in future sessions. Or that initial pickers could become more um, robust pickers with continued treatment so that the initial results would be more permanent. But that required a lot more sessions because I think that uh, the work that Stan did here in Czechoslovakia showed uh, that individual may require between 15 and 80 sessions. Mm -hmm. So that, that's essentially where the research was uh, uh, stalled because it was very difficult to get beyond 10 sessions. And you have to, uh, so do you? Say that do you get the feeling that it's opening up again because of these things going on in Switzerland and Strassman stuff in New Mexico? Uh, well, I have the feeling, you know, there is a need for more effective treatment in psychiatry. 
there are a lot of conditions that we cannot affect very well today. So everybody knows, you know, that people will go on the rest of their life in some kind of twilight in some kind of misery state, and yeah. pain, and they may get better for a while, then they lose it, and it's a sort of uh, like you know trying to plug uh, plug oil holes in a boat that is that is that sinking. Is at in some the point, bottom. you have to say, you know, maybe we can restructure the whole boat rather right, uh -huh. than keep on putting all this energy. And there's tremendous effort. There's social worker. It's a whole it's a whole social system trying to. Uh, sort of uh, put scaffoldings to hold these people to a level of function where they may not have to end up in a hospital where it costs five hundred. So you're saying for the worst reasons we may finally get good I social so, policy. Because we do need it. You see, the mm -hmm. fact is that we need something more effective than what we have. Mm -hmm. Now, at what point will the profession say, you know, we have to look into research that's already been documented to look for what might be a way out of this dilemma because you know the economically society's been drained you know from right, no. providing and uh, any person who has to be re-hospitalized is going to involve thousands of, of dollars just uh, you know everybody gets a physical examination they get laboratory work they get uh, the activity therapist evaluates them the social worker evaluates and psychiatrist evaluates and so it doesn't matter if they come in for two days or if it's the 20th time mm -hmm. or the 30th it time still they still get the time. same and that's what's draining the system you know and uh, so we have to find a way to prevent the illness from either going further or to even to revert back you know we need people to be independent and so this means uh, pharmacology is due for some kind of a mini renaissance, probably, or I, psychopharmacology. I would think so, because now, it's still, I think it's the phase where they're trying to look for the better thoracic and the better antidepressant, and, and that's okay. There's going to be a number of people that are functioning fairly well. They're but you're, you're talking needs, about psychedelically assisted therapy. Of which is different, which would be to treat the personality. So right, to treat the personality. And when you get to um, treating the personality, I think more or less people are conceding that there is no actual way to treat it right now. And uh, that it's a waste of uh, hospital money to hospitalize the patients if they a character disorder because you're not going to solve it in any of their hospitalization. And we have evidence from the work done at the center with LSD or the MDA and the dipropotrichomy that these very severe character disorders suddenly with the effect of the drug could begin to make sense of why they develop their personality, they develop based on the experience that they had growing up, and mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. you you have a patient who says, ah, I could see why, you know, I remember one case where it says it was called the black sheep of the family. Well, in fact, it did become the black sheep of the family. Of course. Uh, and then, but they can begin to make a connection that it's not in their psyche. Uh -huh. I think the character disorder doesn't know why they're doing what they're doing, why they're motivated to do certain things. Uh -huh. Anyway, they're alienated from their inner self. Uh -huh. And if you try to do therapy with them, they laugh at you because they know that you can't verbally get in, it. In, induce them to have anything that is very meaningful, you mm -hmm. see, so the frequently you don't show up for appointments, you know, you see. Mm -hmm. and uh, because they did, and the same person, if you can induce them to have a real therapeutic session, you have a patient. Right. If you say, I'll, just, I'll see you Monday at 8, they'll be there, because now they know there is a history and there is a way to undo it. So it's just a matter of reaching. And, and so, and that's the important thing, because I think there's a lot of, uh, so a lot of issues, for instance, when uh, you get involved with, uh, uh, you know, psychopathy of, and there's criminality. You know, people, they get uh, sent into institution and they're declared, you know, uh, not guilty for reason of insanity. 
at this stage of the game, as I understand it, there is no real reason to release them because there's no way that any psychiatrist could say, They're now I've no cured this right. person and I can guarantee you that he won't do it. You see, that, that, and, and we're still doing it, but I don't think there is a real basis there. We're sort of saying this person wasn't really that criminal and we can take a chance on this person again. Now, if you had a way of really solving the pathology then that you'd was have sustaining, something. then you have, then then you'd you'd have something, something solid to say, I think this person will this, this. Okay, person. Jack, I can feel Jack getting nervous yeah. down here. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of love. But this is good. It is good. Thank okay. You very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think Thank you, you should go for a walk. Not at all. I am. Yeah. Good.